Hello and welcome to this English lesson about things that go together part two. If you recall, we did a lesson earlier this month actually at the end of April. So, about six weeks ago uh, about English words that commonly go together. Um these are words where uh, I think in the last lesson we did words like mac and cheese. Uh in the last lesson we did words like lock and key. Um they're words that if you learn the one word, you might as well just learn the other word as well because they're often said at the same time. So, this is part two. We're going to learn about 30 more word pairs in English that just go together. Uh they just go together really, really well. So, welcome to this lesson about things that go together part two. To toss and turn. So, when you don't sleep well in English, we often will say, oh, I tossed and turned all night or I ate a big bowl of ice cream. Tonight, I'm not going to sleep well. I'm going to toss and turn. So, you can just say, I'm not going to sleep well or you can say, I didn't sleep very well last night. That would be a fine way to describe it but this is a very common thing to say in English. Um I had bad dreams last night and they made me toss and turn all night. So, basically what it means is that you're rolling around in bed. You're not just laying there sleeping nicely. You're kind of like laying on your side and then lay on your other side and then lay on your back. You're kind of moving throughout the night because something is preventing you from having a good night's sleep. So, then you toss and turn. Um last night, I did not toss and turn all night. I had a good night's sleep which makes which makes me uh, happy and in a good mood. Fish and chips. So, I'm not sure how common this is in like the United States. I'm sure in parts of the United States, it's quite common but I know in Britain and in Canada, we have a specific kind of restaurant that sells fish and chips. The town where we sell flowers in also has a fish and chips shop. So, fish and chips are again French fries with fish. So, there's fish. It's usually here. I think it's halibut or cod. Uh, and then it has french fries with it which our British cousins probably call chips uh, but we call them french fries but if you buy them with fish at a fish and chip store, then we call them chips. So, it's the only time in Canada where we say fish and chips and use the word chips to talk about french fries. Cops and robbers. This is a very common game for kids to play. When I was a kid, sometimes my friends would come over and some of them would pretend to be cops and other kids would pretend to be robbers and we would play cops and robbers. So, usually this phrase is used to talk about kids playing, pretending to be a police officer, pretending to be a robber. Uh we often played cops and robbers when I was a kid. Uh the robbers would pretend to steal stuff and hide and then the kids who were pretending to be cops would try to find them. It was uh it was a fun game. We also played hide and seek. That's where one person counts with their eyes closed and everyone else hides and then that person has to find them. I think in French, it's called cash cash but cops and robbers, another game that kids sometimes play. Odds and ends. So, this is an interesting one because most people that I know have a drawer in their kitchen like this. It doesn't have forks and knives and spoons in it. It doesn't have like dish towels in it. It has all different things and we would call this a junk drawer in my family and it's filled with odds and ends. When you say something is filled with odds and ends, it means like this drawer, I think it has a screwdriver and some tape and a stapler and some pencils. Uh, I think there's even some batteries over on the far side. This looks exactly like our junk drawer. It's just filled with all kinds of different things and we would call those things odds and ends. Um I'm wondering if some of you have a drawer like that in your house where it's just filled with odds and ends. It has all different things in it. Bells and whistles. So, this doesn't actually refer to bells and whistles. A bell is a big thing that rings um like bong, bong and then a whistle is like something that a referee uh would have during a sports game but when we use the phrase bells and whistles, we mean that you bought something and it has all of the available options. Like he bought a car with all the bells and whistles. It has power windows and it has GPS and it has um um a stereo and it has 
uh, power steering and all of these things are none of these things are options anymore but <laughs> it has air conditioning it has um intermittent wipers so when you buy something uh and say that it has all the bells and whistles it means that you've bought something uh where instead of the basic model you've spent extra money to get all of the really cool features. Often we'll use this when talking about a car. You know, oh, he bought a new sports car with all the bells and whistles. So, ladies and gentlemen, I don't start my English lessons this way but this is a common thing for people to say when they're talking in front of a group of people. So, a lot of times when you're um doing some public speaking, you'll start by saying, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm glad that you came this evening. Tonight, we're going to talk about and then you would say whatever you're going to talk about. Often when a student gives a speech at school, if there's parents in the crowd, they will start by saying, ladies and gentlemen, fellow students, friends and family and then they'll give their speech. Um so, most often I hear this when someone is giving a talk, when someone is presenting some information to other people. They'll start by saying, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this live English lesson. That's how I should start every week. Maybe I'll change and be a little more formal. Drinking and driving. So, there are word pairs uh, for bad things in the world. Um when you talk about someone who is driving under the influence of alcohol, uh someone who is driving while intoxicated, the informal way to talk about that is to call it drinking and driving. You know, he got a ticket because he was drinking and driving. He was consuming or had consumed alcohol and then was driving his car. He was drinking and driving. So, those two words often are seen together. People make signs saying stop drinking and driving or you know raise the fine for drinking and driving. A very it's a very serious offense by the way in Canada. You should not drink and drive. Safe and sound. We use the words safe and sound usually when someone goes somewhere And when they let us know that they arrived, they'll often say, uh yep, we landed um at the airport and we're in Holland safe and sound or yes, we arrived at our destination safe and sound and it just means that you arrived there and the trip went well. Uh everything is going really, really good and you're happy and safe and sound. So, um it means there was no accident on the way. It means Usually that you didn't lose anything on the way. It means that everything went as planned. So, you arrived safe and sound. In fact, one of my kids went on a trip a couple of weeks ago and the first night they were there, they sent a text message saying that they arrived safe and sound, that they had checked into their hotel and they were looking forward to the next day. So, safe and sound. Wine and cheese. I think we should blame the French for this. I'm not 100% sure but often when you go to a party, there might be some wine and cheese. Often when you have cheese to eat at a party in North America and in many parts of Europe, there will also be wine. I hope I just said that right. When there's cheese, there will also be wine. Cheese and wine just naturally go together. When you're eating some really good cheese, some really well-made cheese, It can be nice to have a glass of wine with it. The two flavors go together really, really well. So, it's common sometimes to go to a party and for someone to have a cheese platter and to serve wine with the cheese and we even call them wine and cheese parties sometimes. Oh, I'm going to a little wine and cheese party at my brother's place to celebrate the fact that they bought a new house. They might have a little wine and cheese party. Hugs and kisses. So, we often in a card, if we're sending a card to someone we love, we might put in the at the end of the card, you know, from Bob, hugs and kisses and then we actually put X's and O's. Um so, an X and O in English and probably in other languages means hugs and kisses. I think the X is a hug and the O is a kiss. I'm not sure but hugs and kisses is something we sometimes say. Um I don't say it but you know, my I think my grandma used to say it like She would sign a card like have a good day, hugs and kisses from grandma uh and then she would put X's and O's. Sometimes people who are dating will do that. You know, a girl will send a boy a card and and say, you know, thanks for the roses on Valentine's Day, hugs and kisses 
your girlfriend or something like that. But uh yes, definitely hugs and kisses are two words that go together. The birds and the bees. So, the reason I have a picture of a person covering their face is because this is an embarrassing one to talk about. The birds and the bees, I guess I should just be honest, is about talking about sex. The birds and the bees is a way that we refer to sex in a without using the word sex. Oftentimes, when uh parents are explaining to their children how animals and people reproduce, when they're explaining to their kids how that works, they'll call it the birds and the bees. They'll say, you know, my son's getting older and it's important that I talk to him about the birds and the bees so he understands how that works. Spaghetti and meatballs. This one's a little easier to talk about. Spaghetti and meatballs is a very common way to eat pasta with a meat topping with sauce. So, if you go to a restaurant, you can order spaghetti and meatballs. It'll look exactly like this. You'll get a plate of pasta noodles with a tomato sauce and some meatballs on it. When I was a kid, whenever we had spaghetti, we had spaghetti and meatballs. My mom would make meatballs. She would fry the meatballs in a frying pan. She would cook the noodles in boiling water and she would heat up some pasta sauce from a jar. Sorry to all of you who might think that's not good. Uh and we would have spaghetti and meatballs. A very common meal. So, when you go to a restaurant, you can order a hamburger and fries, uh fish and chips or spaghetti and meatballs. Now, you know three different things you could order if you were at a restaurant. Socks and shoes. Um so, these kind of go together. Uh sometimes when we go somewhere, uh let's say we're going to go on a hike. I'll say to my kids, Make sure you wear socks and shoes. Instead of sandals or flip flops or all of those other types of footwear which aren't good for hiking, when you go on a hike, there's lots of rocks and sticks. And so I often say to my kids, you need to wear socks and shoes. Um at our school, students are required as part of their uniform to wear socks and shoes. You can't go barefoot, which would be not wearing socks and shoes. So quite often, these two words will go together. Especially when talking about uh, what you should be wearing at a certain place. You need to wear socks and shoes when you go to school. You can't wear uh open toed sandals or you can't just go with bare feet. Sweet and salty. I think last lesson we talked about sweet and sour. There's also a common flavor uh for chips and other things here called sweet and salty. Here you see that there's granola bars that are sweet and salty and there are uh, there is a bag of popcorn that's sweet and salty. So, this is exactly what it says it is. It's a snack that has a salty taste but also a very sugary or sweet taste and it's a very cool mixture of the two flavors. Just like sweet and sour is very yummy, sweet and salty can also be yummy as well. Of the two here, I do like sweet and salty popcorn. In fact, there's a kind of popcorn here where they have caramel corn mixed with um popcorn with cheese on it and salt and it's very very yummy. It's a yummy sweet and salty snack. Obviously, there's salt and pepper. Uh every household that I know of has salt and pepper. Sometimes people put salt and pepper on the table when you have a meal so you can put your own salt and pepper on the food. When you go to a restaurant in Canada, If it's a restaurant where you sit down, the table will have salt, pepper, usually ketchup and maybe some other kind of sauce that you can use. But salt and pepper, very common. You know, you put salt and pepper on your eggs. Some people put salt and pepper on their salad. If you watch a cooking show, when they're done cooking, they'll often put some salt and pepper on the food just before they serve it. Um and we had a question last week uh, or last I think last week about hair. Uh salt and pepper hair would be kind of like my hair. Where there's some darker parts and some lighter parts. So, a little bit of salt and pepper. Bread and butter. So, this doesn't actually mean what you might think it means. On the far side, you'll see a picture of bread with some butter on it. This is not what the phrase bread and butter is used for. When we talk about bread and butter in English, we're talking about what someone does as a job. So, my bread and butter is teaching. Jen's bread and butter is selling flowers. Uh, My sister's bread and butter is that she's a nurse. So, when you talk about someone's bread and butter, you're talking about what they do 
to earn money in life. So, if someone said to me, you know, hey, what's your bread and butter? I would say, oh, I'm a teacher. And if uh someone was describing they their job, they might say, yeah, um I do a lot of work on houses. Um I put roofs on houses. That's my bread and butter. So, it's the main job, the main thing that person does in life. Their bread and butter. Knife and fork. So, probably the two most common utensils um in North America would be the knife and fork when eating a meal. The spoon is also popular but the spoon, yeah, the spoon is used for soup, cereal, desserts but often when you go to have a meal, you will eat a meal with a fork and knife. You don't always have to but almost every meal we eat here, I eat with a fork and knife. So, those two words often go together as well. When you go to a restaurant, when you sit down, there will be a fork and knife and spoon for you. Usually, you use the fork and knife for your meal and if you have soup, you would use the spoon but the fork and knife for some reason go together. I think there's even a nursery rhyme about that, isn't there? That the did the fork run away with the spoon though, maybe. I shouldn't talk about nursery rhymes. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. So, this is kind of a funny one. This is a phrase It's kind of insulting and we use this to talk about two people who are very similar. They don't have to be twins but if there are two people that you know that kind of look similar or two people who dress the same way or two people who are friends, you might call them when they're not around, you might refer to them as Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Uh it's an older phrase. I haven't heard students use this phrase for a very long time. But uh I used to work with two teachers who were very similar. They were the same height. They liked the same things and sometimes when they weren't around, we would call them Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Have you seen Tweedledee and Tweedledum? So, uh anytime you refer to two people, remember it's somewhat insulting. So, be careful if you use this phrase and also not very common but it made me giggle when I found it when I was doing my research because Jen and I have used this phrase before. Ups and downs. So, in life, there are things that make you happy like the person on the far side and there are things that make you sad like the person right here and we call them uh the ups and downs of life. Life has its ups and downs. So, ups would obviously be a day that goes well and downs would be referring to a day that doesn't go well but we often we don't use these words separately. They always go together. So, you would say, oh, I had a good day. The other day I had a bad day but you know, life has its ups and downs or maybe someone is really sad and you want to try to make them happy. You might say to them, hey, um just remember life has it has its ups and downs. You're just going through a tough part of your life right now. Things should get better but yeah, definitely life has its ups and downs. Back and forth. I could not find a good picture for this one. But when something goes back and forth, it goes like this. So, I found a picture of a person pulling a trailer. Sometimes when someone pulls a trailer, the trailer starts to go back and forth behind the car or behind the truck. I don't know if you've ever seen that. So, the phrase back and forth refers to anything that's moving like from one side to the other and back again. So, you could say like a flag in the wind goes back and forth. It just kind of flaps in the wind. Um but this was the the best picture I could find. It's a top view of a person pulling a trailer that's going back and forth. Hopefully, you can see that. And then to and fro. We don't use this phrase a lot anymore but if you have a pendulum and you pull it and let it go, the end of the pendulum will move to and fro. It's basically the same as back and forth. It's just an older phrase that you might read in a book or you might hear in an older TV show. I honestly haven't heard this phrase for a long time but uh you might hear it once in a while. Something can move to and fro. Yin and yang. So, even though this isn't originally English, we do use yin and yang when we talk about things. We use it when we talk about things that have two parts that are kind of different from each other but together they make something whole. So, you might say something like day and night or good and evil or Uh, man and woman or male and female or light and dark. Whenever we talk about things that kind of go together but they have distinct halves, we might use the term yin and yang and I'm not sure if we're using it properly in North America 
uh, but we do definitely say it sometimes and uh, that's how we would use it. To talk about two you know summer and winter or those kinds of things. Things that are part of a whole but they're they're definitely different from each other. Hopefully that hopefully that made some sense. And let's do one more and then we'll get to some questions. Bacon and eggs. Oh, I misclicked there. Let's do one more and then we'll get to some questions. Uh bacon and eggs. So, this is a very common thing to order in a restaurant in North America for breakfast. So, bacon is obviously strips of meat. It's pork and eggs are obviously from a chicken. Bacon and eggs is a very common meal. If I go to my local restaurant for breakfast, I could say I'll have a cup of coffee. Uh I'll have bacon and eggs with white toast uh toasted um and some jam and then they that's what they would bring to me. So, bacon and eggs is probably the most common. Sometimes people order sausage and eggs. That's another breakfast you might have here. Uh but bacon and eggs is a very very common thing for people to order in a restaurant for breakfast. So, now you can order four things. Uh hamburger and fries from the last lesson, bacon and eggs, uh fish and chips and I forgot the other one. What's the other one? Oh, um spaghetti and meatballs. So, you can order lots of food. Pros and cons. So, pros and cons refer to the good and the bad. When you're deciding to do something, sometimes it's good to write a list of the pros and the cons. Let's say I was going to go I was thinking of working at a different school. I could make a list of the pros. I could say, you know, school is closer. Um classes are smaller. I would write down all of the good things about that job. All the pros and then on the other side cons, I would say, you know, I would get paid less. Um more responsibilities. So, pros and cons are simply the good and bad part of something. Uh there's some pros and cons to being a YouTuber. One of the pros of being a YouTuber is that <clears throat> excuse me, I'm my own boss. I get to do whatever I want. One of the cons is that sometimes I make a video and not very many people watch it and then I'm kind of sad. <laughs> Sorry. That is one of the cons actually. Um pins and needles. So, this doesn't actually refer to a pin is something that you can put in the wall or in a piece of clothing. It's a very very sharp little it's like a miniature nail and then a needle is used for sewing but pins and needles is a phrase we use to talk about someone who is anxious about something or worried about something or um nervous or excited a little bit. So, let's put it this way. Sometimes when you apply for a job, you have to wait to find out if you got the job and so, you're on pins and needles for a few days. That means for a few days, while you're waiting for them to call you back to say if you got the job, you're like nervous but excited and worried and you're having all these different emotions. We would say that you're on pins and needles in that situation. It's not fun to be on pins and needles like when when you apply for a job or when you're waiting to get accepted at a university. You might be on pins and needles. Bow and arrow. So, for some reason, when we talk about a bow, we almost always say bow and arrow. There are people that go hunting in this area in the fall using a bow and arrow. We don't say with a bow. We usually almost we almost always say bow and arrow. At the Olympics, there are events where you can use the bow and arrow in order to fire arrows at a target. So, often used in the same phrase. Arts and crafts. So, I think I did a lesson on arts and crafts. I can't remember. I've done so many lessons now. But arts and crafts would be any time you are painting or drawing or even making something. It looks like this person had some plates and they did some painting on the plate. So, we would call that arts and crafts. Maybe you make little baskets. Maybe you create Christmas ornaments. Maybe you sit down with some friends and you buy some materials to make um I don't know. I'm trying to think of other arts and crafts like little bird feeders or something. Whenever you're making little things out of wood or cardboard or fabric uh and then painting it or dyeing it, we call it arts and crafts. So, often uh kids will go uh to camp or they'll go do something fun and they'll have arts and crafts in the afternoon. They might make some little things using a hot glue gun and little pieces of wood or something like that. Copy and paste go together. 
I'm not sure if you knew this but copy and paste is when you highlight something with your computer mouse and then you right click and choose copy or you click the copy button and then you go somewhere else in the document or a different document and you right click and choose paste or you choose the button that says paste. It's a way to duplicate something on a computer. And then meat and potatoes. So meat and potatoes can refer to a meal. So when I was growing up, we often had meat and potatoes. That was a very common meal when I was growing up. Because I lived on a farm, we had plenty of meat and because potatoes are cheap, it's a very common thing to eat in North America. So when I was growing up, my parents often made some kind of meat and potatoes for supper. We would always have a vegetable as well. So we would have broccoli or green beans or a salad but the main part of the meal was often meat and potatoes. Now, we also use this phrase to talk about a person who's just really trustworthy and honest and hardworking. We would say he's a real meat and potatoes guy, okay? Uh, I've been described as a real meat and potatoes guy before. Like I'm I guess I have those characteristics. I don't wanna say what I'm actually like but when you describe someone as being a meat and potatoes person, that's what it means. Uh, Let me actually look up the meaning of meat and potatoes. Meaning of meat and potatoes. It says, uh, an ordinary fundamental thing and the basic ingredients. Oh, I'm reading the wrong definition. Sorry here. Um, so it says, unpretentious, kind, simple, and normal guy. A real meat and potatoes guy. So, there you go. I guess it's a normal human being is a meat and potatoes person. 